four weeks of peace. Her quest, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not, I have a bad memory, so I can't remember everything, but the good Lord knows it all. Amen. So, Brother Lucas, was you raising your hand? Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you and we thank you so much, Lord, for this opportunity Lord, to be able to come into your house. God, this is your house, your territory, God, and we, we just consider it an opportunity and a blessing, Lord, to be able to to be counted as your children, Lord, to be able to come onto your territory, Lord. Let us be careful, God, to give you praise and glory and honor on your territory. Let us be careful, Lord, God, that all praise be sacrificial praise to you, Lord, pleasing uh, aroma to you, Father. God, we have some needs, Lord, amongst the body, Lord, that we need, we need just the Holy Spirit just to manifest and move upon. God, you know each and every single one of these needs, God, because you're a personal God. Lord, you are a God who your spirit meets us wherever we're at, whatever season we're in, whatever situation we're going through. Praise the Lord. Your spirit meets us in every single one of those, and we thank you for that. Holy Spirit, we pray that you just begin to minister to each and every one of these prayer requests, and we believe and know with confidence because of your word tells us that you are working things out. We love you. Now we want to be careful to give you praise this morning. God, help us, Lord, put our flesh aside and come to you in spirit and in truth. God, that we can lift our hands. God, we can lift our voices and bring honor to your name this morning. Father, we love you and we thank you for everything that you're doing for us, Lord. We thank you for who you are. You are our God. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Lift your voices. Let's worship the Lord together in praise. Amen. I want to, this is hot too, really, Johnny, and I need a little Um, I want to sing, I would not be denied. And, uh, you know, there's times in life where our personalities don't jive with others. Or maybe because we're Christians, we seem like the oddballs out. A lot of times in life we're denied by others and we feel alone and left out but I love this song and I always have always loved it because as a child I was bullied but this song always reminded me that no matter what I looked like no matter my personality no matter how different I was that when I came to Jesus he would not deny me that I had that covenant with him and then our, not only that but our needs that we carry to the Lord Maybe, maybe the ones around us don't see them as as important. Maybe you take a loved one to the doctor and the doctors aren't reacting the way we think they should. They deny us what we would like, but God is always there. And He can, as soon as we call out to Him, whether it be Nanny or Papa or whoever it may be, He's right on the spot. He doesn't deny us. Amen. Amen.
nothing but the blood. How many knows it's nothing but the blood? Praise the Lord. Same. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can going, but it also helps us going forward for the kingdom of God because that new breezeway is going to link us together to our new youth building and children's church. So praise the Lord. We're growing and we got we got to make options available for kids. Uh, how many knows it's just as important for kids to be able to worship God and learn how to worship God and have church themselves, right? Yeah. And kids are excited about it too, ain't you? Let us hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Praise the Lord. So we want you to have that option to be able to give 
in tithe and offering this morning. Father, we thank you so much, God, for giving us the opportunity, Lord, to be able to give for the kingdom of God. God, thank you, God, that we have the opportunity to give what you commanded us to give. I pray that you bless the hand that's able to give. We love you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
percent oxygen. Said that uh, she put a lot on here, so I'm trying to just give you some details. But because of some of the things, it kind of uh, indicates. pneumonia on both sides of her lungs. Um, her temperature is at 98.3. Her blood pressure, her blood sugar is up at 207. Normal is 120 to 160. Basically, to, to summarize all of this, what she's told me is she's, she's in a bad place right now and she needs people to pray so before we go too much further I want, I want us to again to, to lift her up in prayer together the Bible says where there's two or three agreeing on anything that it shall come to pass so I want you this moment, I want you to help me pray for my nanny, uh, Linda Ford, right now. Father, we need you to intervene. Holy Spirit, we need you to intervene. Holy Spirit, you see my grandmother right where she's at. You see my nanny right where she's at, Lord. God, you have the healing power to touch her body and make her whole. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, God, as we come together in agreement, Holy Spirit, you would meet her right in the room, that you would touch her body right now in the name of Jesus. God, a healing would activate in her body. Lord, the temperature would remain low would go to normal, that her blood sugar would go to normal right now in the name of Jesus, that her oxygen level will go back down to normal in the name of Jesus, that they will have to take her off of oxygen, Lord, because she is beginning to breathe on her own without those things. Lord, we're believing right now that this pneumonia will leave her body by the authority of the Holy Spirit, I speak in the name of Jesus to this pneumonia to leave right now in the name of Jesus. I speak to her body. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I lift my mother up to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, that you be with her. Give her peace in this situation. Give her strength in this situation, Lord, right now. Lord, I just want to thank you, and I just want to praise your name, God. I want to give you praise that you're worthy of, Lord, because it's by your hand, Lord, we are healed. It's by your love, your grace, and your mercy, God, upon us, God, that we can receive healing, Lord. God, that we can receive a blessing from you, Lord. You are a good, good father. You are a good, good father. Mighty God. Lord, and I just thank you so much for this healing, Lord, that is taking place right now. I believe it, and I receive it for her. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for, thank you for helping me pray there. Brother Tommy, I, I don't know what's going on with our sound this morning, but this thing is ringing like crazy. We uh, apologize to those that are uh, able to watch us on live. Um, our, our live is not really working 
properly right now, so we're having to to uh, do it just the best way that we can. And right now, that best way is uh, doing it off of Brother Tony's iPad. Brother Tony just mute every channel except for this mic. Maybe that'll help a little bit. Um, and uh, so the sound quality may not be the best, and it's not like we normally do it, but hey, we're still here, we're still having church, and that's all that matters. We're able to gather together in the house, and there was a time, church, there was a time that we couldn't even do that. And, uh, but praise the Lord, we're able to come into his house and we're able to worship him and give him praise. Um, I, got a, I got a message this morning and uh, it, it, it's definitely, I, I feel like it's definitely a, a word that is in, on time. It, it's how many believes that, and knows that God is talking. God is always speaking. But the questions are, are we listening? I've preached this message once before, not this one, but I've preached a message like this once before, is God is speaking, are we listening? And I'm here to tell you right now that God is always speaking. There was a time in the Old Testament when God lifted up his voice that the earth would respond. And you see in the Old Testament, when the children of Israel are in the wilderness and God begins to speak to them, that they hear rushing wind and they hear lightning and thunder and the, the sky is darkened and the Mount Sinai is on fire and it, it, it's a terrifying uh, experience so much that the children of Israel tell Moses... Don't let God speak again, but let him speak to you and you tell us what he has to say. And I believe, Brother Don, I believe that when God speaks, it can be terrifying. I believe that when, and when God speaks, uh, things begin to react. And the thing is, is when God speaks, the number one thing that should respond is his people. We should not cower or, or, or in fear uh, of the voice of God, but rather we should listen to the voice of God, be attentive to the voice of God, be aware of the voice of God, and then respond because of what he is telling us to do. So I have some questions for you this morning. God is talking are you listening? That's the first question this morning. First Samuel chapter 3, 1 through 10 is where I'll be starting my reading. I'll be reading my text. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 1 through 10. I believe that, that God is speaking to his people. I believe God is, is, is speaking over the earth. I believe God is, is speaking command and he is he is waiting or, or he is he, he not, not so much him but we need to grab a hold of what he is commanding and what he is is uh, telling us to do and begin to respond in first Samuel 3 1 through 10 we see uh, it just kind of see uh, 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 the uh, God speaking and someone responding, and I want to I want to read that uh, um, this morning. First Samuel chapter three, one through ten. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Verse number one reads like this: And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. When I read that this morning, I felt the Holy Spirit say, you're in those times. You're in those times where the Lord's word should be precious. 
Because it's rare in these days when we get a vision, when we get a word from the Lord that is direct for his people. I don't believe it's rare because God's not speaking or that there is a season of silence from God. I believe it's rare because no one is responding to God speaking. No one is listening to the voice of God. In verse 2 it says, And it came to pass. At that time, when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim, that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I called not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord again called Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not my son, lay down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he call unto uh, thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lied down in his place, and the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. Heareth. Father, I love you and I thank you, Lord. Open up our ears, God. For when you speak, God, let us recognize your voice. God, let us listen. Open up our ears. Let them not uh, wax numb. Let them not grow deaf, Lord. God, that we grow deaf to your voice. But, Lord, let our ears be wide open and clear. Lord, that when we hear you speak, God, we respond, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray at this time, Lord, open up our hearts, open up our understanding. God, Holy Spirit, operate through me, speak through me, speak through this vessel, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And help me, Lord, bring forth this message as you've given it unto me, Lord. Provoke us to move forward in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word. So we see Samuel here. I want, you to sh I want to show you the key here. Why Samuel? We read about Samuel and we read about how great a prophet he was. Samuel is the one who chose uh, Saul to be king. He's the one that anointed Saul to be king. Samuel is also the one that anointed David to be king and here we see the beginning stage the beginning years of Samuel as he's a child for those that don't know the history or, or, or how this began with Samuel his mother was barren and his mother was a, a woman of God and she knew where the source was. She knew that God was the one that she would need to go to to answer her prayer to, for her to have child. And so she was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak. And people thought that she was drunk, but she told them she wasn't drunk. She was talking to the Lord and she prayed that God would give her a man child and that if God would give her a man child that she would then after it is we after he would be weaned he would she would take him and she would give him to the house of God she would give this child to the church and that he would live the rest of his lives uh, rest of his life for God and so that 
happened. God blessed her, gave her what she asked for. She became pregnant with a, a boy, and she gave birth to a boy. She, After the boy was weaned, she took him to the church where Eli was the priest. Uh, if you know the history of Eli, he is uh, 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 the the um, the the. I can't think of the word, but the offspring, or or however you would say it, of the uh, Levites. He's offspring of Aaron, which Aaron was chose by God to be the priesthood, and that forever. This is what God said: forever, the children of Aaron would be in the priesthood, and and now we're coming up to this time where Eli is the priest, and here Samuel is being raised up underneath this priest uh, and he is uh, uh, fo uh, following the footsteps of Eli and he's following and he's being taught how to be a man of God before he even knows the word of God. Just bear with me, get, let's get some foundation laid. But Eli is not so much a man of God as he should be because he's allowing his children to uh, um, act, uh, to do things that are not right in the eyes of God in the, the holy place or in the church. They're doing things that, that is, is frowned upon God. God's displeased with it, therefore displeased with um, uh, Eli uh, because he is not stopping what's going on. And how many knows that you cannot put all your trust in a mere man? You cannot put all your trust and focus uh, on a pastor or an evangelist. Uh, when it should be a time where a pastor would stand up for God uh, and he'd be a statue of God. But you can look uh, in our world today and see that there are a lot of pastors uh, who are not standing up for God uh, like they should be. Uh, and what they don't realize is they're not being very good examples for children that are being raised uh, in the church, but what we need to realize is we don't need to focus just on man, but we need to teach our kids to listen to God. Eli might not have been doing a, a whole lot of things right, but the one thing he did right was teach Samuel to listen to the voice of God. Eli might have not been pleasing in the eyes of God. But Eli did something right at this moment. He was teaching Samuel, when you hear him speak, you respond in this way. My questions are this morning, God is talking. Are you listening? Are you responding? Are you listening? But not just listening, are you responding? Maybe you've been listening, but You've not, you've not begun to respond to what God is telling us or telling you to do. Maybe God, maybe, maybe you you heard the voice of the Lord because the Bible tells us uh, that His sheep know His voice. Uh, we know when God speaks to us, we can feel it in our heart, we can hear it in our ears, we can feel it and hear it in our spirit. But if we're listening, but are we responding to the voice of God? Are we responding to the command? Are, are we operating uh, in the command of God and doing what He's telling? us to do. Uh, I feel this morning uh, that God is uh, speaking out and saying uh, that I need some people to begin to respond from my command. Uh, now is not the time to ignore the command of God. Now is not the time to shut your ears off from God. Now is the time to listen and respond. Now is the time to respond. Samuel did not yet know the, the voice of God, did not know yet know the word of God. How did, how did it say it? It said, it says here that uh, Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. 
So that tells me that Eli maybe wasn't teaching him and, and training him yet. Here Eli is the priest. And it says in scripture here, it says that the, the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was and Samuel was laid down to sleep. So that tells me they're right there. They're, in, they're right there next to the temple where the ark of the covenant is. If you, under, if you know how the temple w operates, you have three different uh, you have three different era, areas in the temple. You have the outer courts, you have the inner courts, and then you have the Holy of Holies. The outer courts is where you would do all the sacrifices. That, that's where all the ceremonies and stuff would take place. The inner courts is where the praise, that's where you would prepare yourself to enter in. Only the priests are able to go into the temple and that was that was the, the place where you would prepare yourself to go into the Holy of Holies. If you went into the Holy of Holies and you had not yet prepared yourself, you would die. Because of the presence of the Lord, because of the Ark of the Covenant, uh, uh, you'd be, you would die. Therefore, a lot of times they would take and they would tie a rope to their, their leg and they would have a bell at the end of the rope. So that when they would enter into the Holy of Holies, if they were not prepared and they died, they would be able to pull the body out so that they could continue uh, the process. But, but here they are. They, they are so close. The word recognizes that the lamp had went out uh, in, in the temple where the ark of God was. So they're, they're, they're right there next to the temple. Um, Eli is the priest that's supposed to be training, but the Bible says here, the scripture says that, that Samuel, uh, not yet knowing the word of the Lord, not yet knowing uh, um, uh, how to hear the word of the Lord, so, but even though he wasn't prepared, even though he wasn't trained to hear the word of God, and even though God said, I'm not waiting on Eli, I'm speaking to Samuel. I've got a, I, I've got a plan for Samuel. I've got to use him in the, in the future. I've got to use him and begin. And, and not only that, God said, I've got a message that needs to go to the priest. I, Oh, hallelujah, I felt that one. I, I, we need to teach our kids how to listen for the voice of God. We need to teach our kids how to hear the word of God in the word of God. We're a blessed people because we got the Bible, hallelujah, which is the word of God. We can open it up and when we begin to read it, we can hear the command of God and he will tell us what to do through his word. But here we are in the Old Testament and it's Eli's job to teach this kid uh, how to listen to the word and open up the ancient text uh, and teach him the words of God. Uh, yet he's not yet learned, uh, but the voice of God speaks to him and says, uh, I got a message for you to give to the priest. Uh, I've got something. Hallelujah, aren't you glad that God is not a respecter of age, uh, but he'll use you if you will listen. Hallelujah. He don't care, Brother Chris, if you're ready or not. He don't care if you've been studying for years or if you just opened up the Bible. He doesn't care if your devotion with him is every single morning, every single day, or you just started. The point is, is that you find a starting place. You open up your ears and begin to listen for the command of God. Isaiah would be would have a vision that he was in the holy of holies. He was in heaven. And when the voice of the Lord would speak, the, 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 the pillars of heaven would tremble. And, 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 and Isaiah said, Woe is me, for I am undone. I'm a man with unclean lips. Hallelujah. And he was blessed because of that. And God said, Will anyone go for me? And Isaiah raised his hand and said, Here I am, Lord. Use me. Isaiah heard the voice of the Lord, heard the command of the Lord, and said, I'm here. Use me. Yet he was a man with unclean 
unclean lips. We have this problem where we think we've got to get ourselves to a certain point before God can use us. And that's just a lie from the devil trying to keep you from operating or responding to the command of God. We need to quit thinking. We need to get out of the mindset that I, I've got. To, I'm not. I'm not worthy to do this. No, we're not worthy. But the amazing thing is, is God still wants to use us. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. We may not be worthy, but get that out your mind. Because Hallelujah! Jesus died two thousand years ago, so that you can make a choice to take on His righteousness and throw your rags to the side uh, and begin to move and operate uh, in the Holy Spirit uh, to be a living sacrifice for the kingdom of God. He's speaking, church. Are you listening? Are you responding? He's speaking, church. But how many are actually responding? Come on, somebody. You hear me this morning? Yeah. We've got a mindset that we must first get ourselves ready. And listen to me. I want you to hear my heart this morning. We must always have a pursuit in our hearts and in our minds of preparation. We must always have a, 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 a in our hearts and in our minds, we must always have a, a mindset of i got to prepare myself for the Lord. But just because you're not ready doesn't mean God can't use you. Yeah. Amen? Are you with me this morning? We have a lot of people. I can imagine, let me say it like this, I can imagine that there are a lot of people who back away, they hear the voice of the Lord telling them to do something. And instead of thinking about what God is telling them to do and what it's going to do for others, because they are not ready, because they're ashamed, they back away and they run the opposite direction. We hear, we, we can see in scripture of another man like that. Where Jonah was commanded to go unto Nineveh. But because of his hatred of Nineveh, he refused the command of God and ran from it. There are a lot of things in our lives that differ from each and everybody else, everyone has their own thing. But some people might have hatred. Some people might have shame. Some people, whatever it is, that will try to keep you from responding to the command of God. We need to get to a place where we can put the fleshly things aside. And when we hear the voice of the Lord, begin to respond to the voice of the Lord. Let me show you something. First Samuel chapter 3 chapter 4 we see now it's still chapter 3. This is what God told Samuel. He said in the Lord this I love this part. It said uh, and I already read it, but I want to read this again. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times. I didn't ample, I didn't I didn't stop on that for a minute. The fact that it does not mention that Samuel seen God, he heard God. God was standing right before him, Brother Don, but he didn't see God, but he heard God. You ain't got to see it to believe it. We walk by faith, 
na basa. This world will tell you that we believe, uh, you, you, you seeing is believing. This world will make you think that you have to see it, you have to feel it, you have to be a Thomas. I will not believe unless I see it for myself. Boy, what he was missing out on, amen. Blessed are those, Jesus would say to him, who have not seen me, yet they believe. You know what? We're a blessed people. Because we've not seen Jesus face to face physically. But we see him spiritually through the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we're able to operate in that. But I, I thought that was neat where he stood and called. I'm telling you something. God is calling us to do something. Are we listening? Or are we responding and the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel. This is what God is saying to a child. I am going, I, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that heareth, it shall tingle. In that day, I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house it when I began, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever, uh, forever for the iniquity which he knoweth. Because his sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. And Samuel lay until the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, Here am I. And he said, What is the thing that the Lord has said unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. God do so to thee, and more also, if thou hide anything from me of all the things that he said unto thee. Ain't that ironic that he was telling, uh, he was teaching Samuel there. Um, he called him son almost would think that Eli wished that Samuel was his only son because Samuel would have brought honor to the name of Eli or to Eli because of uh, uh, his obedience to God. But we see here Samuel or Eli is saying to him, if you hide the word of God from me, that you'll get the same thing that I know is already coming to me. You see, in chapter 2, the Lord already told uh, Eli what was coming to him. But here we see that Eli is not hearing the voice of the Lord now, but it's coming through a child. It is important, I'll say this again, that we raise our kids up and teach them the word of God and how to listen to the word of God and to begin to respond. You see here that Eli is teaching him not just to listen. He was afraid to speak out because he was afraid of the message that God gave him. But Eli is teaching him now. He taught him first how to listen. He said, when you hear the voice of the Lord, you say, Lord, speak. Your servant is here listening. He taught him first how to listen, and now he's teaching him how to respond. If you hold your tongue and you do not speak, the same thing I know is coming to me will come to you also. He said, if you hold your tongue, then God will, uh, that you'll have a curse on you instead of a blessing on you. I don't know about you, but I think uh, if you look at your at our children these days, uh, that, that there's a curse upon our children because the parents are not teaching them how to hear the word of God, how to listen and not only listen, but respond. How many knows it's important to listen to the voice of God and respond? And here Eli, uh, uh, Eli is teaching him, don't just listen to the voice of God, but respond to the voice of God. And then 
Then he goes on and Samuel tells Eli uh, what God said. And then you go to the next chapter and exactly what God said. His two sons would die at the same time. Exactly it happened. Exactly like God said it. And then on, on, not only that, but word came back that the Philistines stole the Ark of the Covenant. And it, when Eli got the word, Eli fell backwards. He was 89 years old and he sat upon a stool and when he heard the word uh, that the Ark of the Covenant was captured and taken from them, he fell backward, broke his neck and died. You see the, the curse that was upon Eli for not listening and responding. And I wonder, I wonder, I wonder where we're at. Because God is speaking to his church. God is speaking to us. Yeah. And I feel we're not listening. God is speaking to us and maybe we're listening, but I fear we're not responding. And how much more we could be blessed and see things happen for the kingdom of God if we would begin to respond to what God is telling us to do. Don't close your ears off to God. Don't be a Moses and say, Lord, you've got the wrong person. God, you, I, I, I stutter when I speak. I, 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 I've killed a man. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not prepared for this. I'm not ready for it. God wants to use you. God is speaking to you and telling you something. Somebody that hears my voice this morning, God's been speaking to you saying, this is how I want to use you. But in fear, you're turning your back from him. You're afraid to work because you think you're not ready. But God, if he has spoke to you, then you're ready enough. Boy, it's quiet in this church this morning. If he has spoke to you, you're ready enough. If he tells you to do something, don't go deaf to his voice. Don't shut off. Don't shut yourself off. Don't be a Moses thinking, well, I'm not prepared enough. I'm not ready enough. I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not done enough yet, Lord. Why are you even talking to me, God? I'm not to that point yet where you can use me. God is saying, I'm speaking to you so you're ready. I'm speaking to you and I'm commanding to you what I want you to do. All I need you to do is respond. Don't be a Jonah and out of anger because of some church hurt or something that happened uh, you say Lord I, I can't do it because so and so did this to me no don't be a Jonah but respond to the voice of God don't be a Peter and, and, and be ashamed because you 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 turned your back on God and, and you ran away from him and you had a moment of weakness and you ran away uh, and out of shame you you for the voice of God comes to you and tells you to do something. But you say, oh God, I can't do it. Lord, I did this to you, Lord. I'm not worthy to do it, Lord. Don't, don't, don't talk to me, Lord. I, I can't do it. Don't be ashamed. Don't be a Peter. But, but, but respond to the voice of God. Praise the Lord. Jesus told them, go and tell the disciples and Peter. The voice of the Lord went forth to Peter even though he was ashamed for what he had done. The same man who said, I'll die for you, yet the very next moment refused and denied him three times. Out of shame, it could have kept him from being the leader the one who would lead the disciples into the ministry of God. Out of shame, he could have been a uh, he could have been a Judas and hung himself. Don't be don't be a Judas and don't be a Peter 
but being one that when the voice of the Lord comes forth, that you respond. Being Isaiah, who says, here I am, Lord, use me. Isaiah could have easily been a man of shame. Said, Lord, woe is me. I'm undone. I'm a man of, unfit, of uh, filthy lips. Unclean lips. Yet, he said, Lord, here I am. Use me. This is the, this is, this is just the bottom line of the whole message right here. If that's you, I'm going to say this. Ain't none of us fit. Ain't none of us worthy. But God loves us enough and wants to use us that he will speak into your life. The question is, are you listening? Will you respond? Father, I come to you right now, Lord. I've delivered the message that you have for me to deliver. I speak this over the people of God of abundant life, Lord. I pray, Lord, that as you begin to speak, Lord, God, you have leaders in here. You have people of talent people with special gifts, Lord. God, you have plans for each and every one of us in this building, Lord. I pray, God, as you begin to speak into our lives, Lord, that we are aware of your voice, and that we listen to what you're telling us, and we hold not our tongue. But God, we respond in the way that you have commanded us to respond. That we move in the way that you have commanded us to move. That we operate in the way that you have commanded us to operate. Your word tells us, Lord, to present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable service. I pray, Lord, let us begin to operate in that in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your word. We thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. I want y'all to remember, remember to lift up uh, Brother Marty and Sister Karen. Um, actually, before we leave here, we got time because... We, we got 15 minutes before we actually leave on regular time. I, I did you a favor. There you go. Yes, Brother Chris.